Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf and to another book haul. Yes, I bought more books and I'm happy about it and I want to share them with you. It's not a huge haul, six books I bought, two of them new releases and four backlisted books. And I want to start with the new releases and the first one is this. Let me see. Yeah so that you can see the author's names, name Bettina Gapa, Out of Darkness Shining Light, which was published in September of this year. And I featured this book in my September TBR video, to be released video, if you remember, if you're watching my videos at all. But of course you do, all of you. Uh, Bettina Gapa is a Zimbabwean author. Uh, she also has a law degree, which sort of draws me to her fellow lawyer. She lives in Geneva and works there as a lawyer. And I've read one previous book by her, The Book of Memory, which is a, the story of memory. It's the name of the main protagonist in the book, which I quite liked. So that put her on my radar. Um, Out of Darkness Shining Light is historical fiction. It is set in Africa um, in 1873-ish. Um, and it centers around the uh, David Livingston, who died in 1873 in Africa. Um, David Livingston, I don't think I need to introduce him, Scottish physician and explorer, you know. And the, the story of this book is the 69-something people who carried David Livingston's body 1,500 miles uh, across the continent in order for him to be brought home um, together with his uh, books and documents and findings so that uh, everything he wrote down could be preserved. I thought it was interesting, um, at, at, I mean that's what draw me to the book, is that it is written from um, the perspective of two people that are normally, if you talk about David Livingston, not telling the story. That's Halima, who was um, David Livingston's cook, and Joseph, um, a freed slave. And they tell us the story of this voyage. And I expect that the, the point of view will add something new to the discussion of colonization and, um, you know, the hypocrisy of slavery. So I'm, I'm really looking forward uh, to diving into this. The second book that I call a new release is actually a republishing of an earlier release, and that is Aaliyah Whiteley's Skein Island, which was originally published, if I understand it correctly, in 2015, but was republished um, in November, so just this month. Um, Aaliyah Whiteley is a, a British author, and I have never read her because she writes kind of horror fiction, which is not really my cup of tea. So this is a book that is probably um, um, yeah, out of my normal reading zone, but I was interested uh, in the story. Uh, Skane Island is a, a refuge. It, it's set in present day. Uh, Skane Island is um, a refuge island just off the coast, uh, the British coast, um, um, which was purchased by um, some rich woman some decades ago, um, and it's a refuge for women. You can only go there, first of all, if you are a woman, a woman, and second of all, if you are invited to go there. Then you can spend a week there, um, uh, free of charge, you know, everything is provided for, uh, with one, um, uh, uh, you, you only have one thing to do, and that is write a declaration for the library of Skane Island. You have to write about your life. Um, the book is told from two perspectives. Uh, Marianne, who goes to Skane Island and whose mother went to Skane Island and disappeared afterwards, and Marianne's partner, David. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I thought the premise was interesting for sure, but I know um, uh, going into it that um, I have trepidations because it, it's probably not a book for me, but I mean, I, the cover is gorgeous, so there's always that. Um, and I, I always try at least, uh, you know, to pick up books that are outside of my normal reading zone, even, even with 
the even if the result is that I don't like those books uh, that much, but it's still interesting for me to try them. So those were the more or less new releases that I bought uh, on to the backlist. And the first is a nonfiction book because after all it's nonfiction November, so I can't I, I felt that I couldn't go out buying books and not buy at least one nonfiction book. Um, and the one I found is this one, Janet Malcolm. Um, the Silent Woman about Sylvia Plath and uh, her husband Ted Hughes, published in 1993. Uh, Janet Malcolm is um, a, a non-fiction writer that I really like. She writes essays and also biographies. And I recently read her, I think, most famous book, probably, uh, The Journalist and the Murderer, um, about a journalist who was embedded in the defense team uh, in a famous, famous ma murder case um, and then wrote a book that was not what the defense team expected. Uh, leave it at that. Um, and this one is called a biography of Sylvia Plath, but um, from what I understood and I, I flipped through the book, it's also more a reflection on writing biographies. Um, what it what it gives you or doesn't give you, and how you know your point of view is shaped as a biographer, but also as a reader by biographies. And Janet Malcolm is such an intelligent nonfiction writer that I am really really curious to see how she approaches this subject of biographies. And of course, uh, if you're following me for any length of time, you know how much I admire Sylvia Plath. So. I want to read about Sylvia Plath, but I also want to get this Janet Malcolm's perspective on the writing of biographies. The next one um, is fiction again, uh, and it's a 2017 release, so it's not that old, but still for me at least a backlist book, even though I think it's her last book. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> and that is Christina Baker Klein, A Piece of the World. Uh, I blame Doris for this, um, and because she featured this book in one of her um, haul videos quite recently, uh, and I had forgotten about the book. I had saved it on Goodreads uh, as a to read and had forgotten all about it. So thank you, Doris, uh, for reminding me. And I went and looked for it uh, in the used bookstore and bought it as soon as I saw a copy. Anyway, <laughs> Christina Baker Klein is. Um, uh, an American writer, uh, sort of historical fiction. And this one, this book is um, the fictionalized account uh, of the relationship between a famous American painter, Andrew Wyeth, and the subject of one of his most famous paintings. I will leave uh, here, probably there, <laughs> a picture of the painting, which is called Christina's World. Um, and it uh, depicts Christina Olsen. Um, first of all, I adore uh, Andrew Wyatt's work. Um, I yeah, it 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 just captures my imagination. I will leave uh, a link to a video um, down below where you can see uh, his, his paintings. And of course, Christina's world. Th this painting is one of the one of his most famous. I think even the most famous. Um, and the story behind it I, is, is really sad because uh, the, the woman depicted on the painting seems to be just, you know, sitting on the grass. Um, uh, but Christina Olsen had a degenerative muscle disease. It's not quite clear what she had, but it meant that she couldn't walk. So what the painting actually depicts is uh, Christina Olsen crawling through the fields towards the house. Um, yeah, f f sad and fascinating and um, I'm really thankful to you Doris for putting this back on my radar and I'm very very much looking forward to reading it. The next book I bought was also a booktube inspired by uh, because um, uh, I told you earlier that Sean from Sean the Book Maniac sent me books from 
Japan all the way. <laughs> and one of the books he sent me is by um, American-born Canadian author Carol Shears. This one, Swan, uh, published in 1987. And I'm, as you can see, I'm currently reading it. But that's not the book in the book hall, so I will put it down. <laughs> but anyway, Carol Shields is one of these authors that I always meant to read. I read her short story collection, uh, or a short story collection, years and years and years ago. And I always meant to read more of her. Um, uh, she was an American author, uh, born in 1935, and she died just at the beginning of this millennium, 2003. Um, she won the Pulitzer Prize and, you know, anyway, I wanted to read more. So Sean sending me one of her books reminded me of that. And the book I wanted to pick up, um, is her Pulitzer, uh, award-winning novel, um, The Stone Diaries from 1993. And I think I just said, the second time around, I said that she was an American author. She's an American-born Canadian author, Sean. I know, I know. <laughs> Anyway, The Stone Diaries is a book about Daisy Stone Goodwill, um, born in 1905, and her life. So it's a, a, you know, a whole life story in one book. I don't know much more about that and I don't uh, about it, and I don't want to know, except like I already mentioned that it won the Pulitzer Prize, and that it was one of the books uh, by Carol Shields that I w wanted uh, to, to pick up for very long time. But I will finish Swan first. I'm about a third in and so far I'm really liking it and then I will probably read The Stone Diaries next. And the last book I picked up is Fantasy and that is Naomi Novik's book His Majesty Dragons, the first one in a series published in 2005. And last week, uh, a week ago, so last Wednesday, I filmed a tag video, Alphabet Soup Tag, E is for Ending, and I talked about um, the fact that I wanted, I want to get m more into fantasies, try and find some sort of subgenre or author in fantasy that I really enjoy. And thank you very much, by the way, for all your lovely suggestions of fantasy books and authors uh, that. Uh, you recommended for me to try. So I really, really appreciate all your recommendations. Uh, but I had already scheduled this as a buddy read uh, with Chris from Chris's, Chris Bookish Cauldron because he reads a lot of fantasy. And so I'm sort of latching on to him trying to learn something about fantasy. And I've never read uh, Naomi Novik, even though, you know, the, the the last series started with Uprooted, but that was a bit, sounded a bit too fairy tale -y for me, and I'm not into fairy tales, as you might know. But this sounds like a straightforward fantasy book, uh, but with an historical twist, which drew me to it, because it's set in the uh, Napoleonic War, so the French-British War, and you have this uh, British captain, Will Lawrence, and he seizes a ship, and in that ship, a French ship, of course, and in that ship is an unhatched dragon egg, and then the story takes off from there. And this combination, you know, of a fantasy world, but set in a, uh, in a historical um, setting, set in a historical setting. Wow. <laughs> anyway, that combination, I thought, is for me interesting, and maybe... Uh, Naomi Novak will be a fantasy author that I really enjoy. I hope it also for Chris's sake because he has to read it with me and I really hope that I will not spoil our buddy read by not liking the book but I have good hopes. So anyway these were the six books that I bought recently. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and let me know uh, whether you read any of the books that I hauled or whether you're interested in any of them or whether there are recent acquisitions that you are especially excited about. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.